All right. Hello, everyone. I am so excited. We are um, going to talk about Manuka. So this is one of the oils that's um, part of the Australian February uh, promotion. So I'm glad that they, they have this um, so that I get the chance to talk about it. So this information is in my book as well. So you can find my book in Amazon, my website, Lulu and Kindle. Okay, so um, Manuka. Who here has used Manuka? You got it with you there? That's awesome. Yeah. I love this so much. I bought the bars. Uh-huh. Like, the um the whole kit actually okay. but I love 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 the um shower or bath bars yeah. so good so yeah. so yeah oh, I love it yes Thank and you. I did not purpose I just realized I was wearing this hat oh, <laughs> I did not beautiful. plan that I just happened to wear this when yeah. we went kayaking so is that the the Malama hat my yeah this is the Malama hat oh but it. it's yeah. kind of funny. well I love it you, you match there so fantastic well, I was like, just so excited when this came out. And you see how it's, um, when you buy it, it's in that box. It's in that black box. Um, the Manuka honey, right? It comes in a black box like that too. But it's way, way expensive. Um, and uh, so we had uh, tourists, you know, come to Australia, for example, or tourists from Japan. And they'll buy you know, like stacks of Mahuka honey and they're like $200 a pop and they'll buy a bunch because um, it's uh, so valuable. And it's uh, more affordable in Australia than, you know, if it was shipped over to their country. So very interesting. And I'm, I, I see why doTERRA made it uh, the box very similar to the Mahuka jars that people are used to buying. Yeah. So um, as you already know, most of you know that Manuka is indigenous to New Zealand okay, and to some parts of Australia. Um, so for a very long time, a Manuka, you know, which is a species of tea tree, has been used for medicinal purposes. But in the 19th century, Manuka in the form of honey became commercialized. So they started to package it and sell it to people. Uh, Manuka honey is made by Australian and New Zealander bees that pollinate the native, it's a uh, leptospermum, um, scorpion bush. Um, and um, the raw honey can be very expensive and can cost more than $200 a jar. So uh, imagine that. Um, historically, Manuka has been used to treat wound infections and other infectious skin conditions by native Australians and New Zealanders. And uh, Manuka, Manuka blossoms can range from white to burgundy. The color is important when I write about these things because color is very symbolic um, and uh, it has certain uh, energy. So um, yeah, uh, it's uh, good to, to know the, the colors because it can give you a few clues there, okay? Um, have you guys eaten Manuka honey? Yeah, uh, it's it's a strong taste, um, but yeah, I, you don't want to buy two hundred dollar jars all the time everywhere. <laughs> Put on your toast, right? Um, but the good news is one: the power of one drop of the DoTerra Manuka essential oil is equal to twenty seven jars of Manuka raw honey. Wow! Right? Wow, we okay. Um, so manuka oil is to steam from the aromatic compounds of the flowers, the leaves, and the stems of the manuka tree. Um, and it can be used topically and aromatically. And because it's from doTERRA Australia, um, there's a lot of regulations that stop us from putting, you know, you can take these internally. So I'm not going to go any further, but uh, you can um, feel inspired and, uh, you know, prompted to use it however you like. All right, so the main chemical constituent is leptospermine, um, and e calmine alpha pinene, um, and cadena 5, uh, cadena 3 and 5, diene, something like that. I hope I'm saying it right. Um, but basically, 
uh, there is a very powerful, um, I guess, environmental threats. <laughs> there we go. Does anybody have any stories or experiences they want to share about Nanruka? I, I have a story and I'll share it in a minute, but um, yeah, if you guys uh, remember, you can raise your hand and we can hear your story there. All right, so dry scalp, um, we can use it for dry scalp. What I would do is uh, dilute it and that's why it comes in like the diluted version. Okay, so um, you know, you can just apply it topically right on. Yeah. Um, so Debbie, um, it'll be up to you if you want to take it internally. <laughs> yeah, I, I have, so to be honest, anyways, um, but it's not, uh, it's not, um, on the instructions. So just, if you want to be careful, just follow the instructions. Um, okay. So sorry, dry scalp is, um, any type of, uh, scalp issues so we can call them dandruff we can have um say psoriasis under your skin uh on your skin on the scalp okay um so just dilute it and apply it on topically okay sometimes you just want to let it stay there for a minute and soak in before you wash your hair or if you want to put it on afterwards okay um it's great for uh, cleaning fingernails and toenails um, so my story is my friend, her husband has a black toe um, and it's like toe fungus for 20 years and they've done everything they could. Sometimes it will fall out um, and then they'll grow back in, but it'll still have fungus. And um, she asked me, what can she do? Because she's tried, you know, a few oils that doTERRA has and it hasn't worked. And I said, well, let's pull out the big guns. And um, Manuka was the first thing I suggested she do. Okay, because Manuka is one of the big guns to help clean um, things up. So she did that. And within a month, it cleared up completely and she was shocked. And then um, I asked her, because it's on his big toes, do you find that he's thinking more clearly? And she was like, Oh, yes, um, it is, you know, come to think of it. And so, and I said, yeah, because it helps you on all the levels, right? So, you know, obviously he's made some changes as well. So well done. Um, so this girl, she was so excited um, because her son had some skin issues. He caught some sort of skin infection from the local swimming pool and it was spreading all over her son's legs and then his tummy. Um, and the doctor says that they can have this infection for, you know, over a year or more. And so it's very severe, um, very difficult to get rid of. And so now that she knows about the Manuka, she added it to his blend. And then she added all of the big guns that I'll share with you what they are later. Um, and she eliminated it within a week or two. And, you know, it was, it was just really, you know, satisfying to know that we can have the power to, to help clear our skin and stuff. Um, yeah, on our own with uh, essential oils. Yeah. Okay, so it can soothe bug bites. Okay, so it kind of um, neutralizes the, the poison. Um, so if you have a little bit of a mosquito bite or something, you just put it right on and help the skin there, okay? Um, it helps with gut health. And as I mentioned, you know, uh, before, we may not um, need to take it internally. You can apply it on the bottom of your feet. Um, you can apply it on the reflex points there. Apply it on your tummy as well, okay? So when you're putting oils on you, it goes in you because they're very pure, okay? Um, it's immune boosting, so you want to add that to your immunity blend. That would be really healthy. Um, or you can diffuse it. So I like to do both. Okay, if somebody's not well, it doesn't need to be spread. Okay, um, so healthy blood 
pressure support as well. So, so read somewhere um, that it's um, just really good for that. Um, so yeah, try it out guys. But I feel like the quality that it has is cleansing quality. So when things are cleaner, your body is able to function better. And that includes all the, all the vitals and stuff, okay? Um, healthy gums. So if you want to, you can um, swish with a couple of drops of manuka, um, you know, or use uh, the virgin um, not olive oil, but uh, coconut oil to oil pull. Okay, so that's another oil that you can use to oil pull, and then you can spit it out in the garbage. Okay, yeah. so like I said, it's a it's a form of a tea tree, but um, it's like super super tea tree. And there's another one that's a cousin to Manuka, which is Kanuka. So that's another call. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for clean and clear skin, Manuka, um, I think, is one of the ingredients in HD Clear. Um, and uh, you now you can add it, add it if it's not, then add it to your skin clearing. Um, yeah, blends. Okay, so it's not just cleaning at the surface, but it does help you on the emotional level as well to have healthier boundaries. Okay, but it's super strong. Okay, it helps clean the air. So if you need to get um, your air clean because of airborne pathogens and things, um, that's a good oil to diffuse. Okay. Um, for ear aches, um, you can apply it to the bone behind your ears and then down your neck. Okay, so when people have ringing in their ears, we need a more powerful oil. Um, some people use tea tree or basil, um, but you know, if you have some manuka, you can try that too. Okay, because maybe manuka is the oil you need. Right, um, and then for joint support, um, because you're using this regularly, hopefully, um, it can help you clean the insides of you because a lot of times, when we're stressed um, and not going to the bathroom regularly, and we haven't detoxed, um, we um, may have an overgrowth of fungus and parasites and bacteria. And so those, um, those things can help, uh, can create a lot of inflammation. And so when we eliminate the invaders, the inflammation goes down because your body's not searching for this moving, changing target in your body, okay? So when it searches through your body, it kind of breaks up tissues, it's looking for it. So your body knows what it's doing, but you know, when we keep feeding it and you know, supporting the fungus growth, um, then it's like a losing battle, right? So if you use manuka and other really powerful oils, it'll help reduce the fungus and then which reduces your body's need to break through tissues to look for the moving, changing targets. So I hope that makes sense. Anybody have any? Questions or comments? Anybody? I do actually. Um, directed at the joint support. Um, so you you are talking about externally, like actually rubbing it on joints, and that it's supposed to help with, like the the pain or mm -hmm. both the pain and the internal bugs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So lemongrass does the same too, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, Melissa. So remember, anytime we put oils on us, it's going to be in us, anyways, right? So yeah, use it um, whenever you feel inspired to. I know it's kind of expensive, but it's not as expensive as the two hundred dollar honey. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So go ahead and use that. Yeah. Okay, guys, emotionally, Manuka is the oil of being sustained. Okay, so listen carefully here. Manuka, um, well, when we are aware that we are upheld and sustained by divine powers, we we'll begin to live life more fully. So, really, we're scared um, and we're anxious because we haven't, you know, allowed ourselves to believe that right living life more fully means we can now learn more grow higher serve wholeheartedly 
love deeper and exist more intentionally. So I'm sure most of us here on the call are experiencing that already. You know, we're on that journey of being more intentional in everything we do. So well done there. Um, and here this oil kind of gives us a reminder to do that uh, even more so. Manuka reminds us that we are known to God. We are not forgotten, nor are we just another person. God remembers and knows us all. He has prepared specific abundant blessings for each individual. There is a unique place and purpose for each of us on earth. So that's a beautiful message. In fact, God sustains and consecrates our efforts in our calling with your pure intentions. He will uphold what you say and do in his name. So I don't know if you guys experience this, but I do this a lot. Sometimes when I try to help somebody or trying to do something good, I feel that sustaining power and I'm speaking stuff that I'm like, oh, that's great. Note to self. And then um, I'm doing stuff that I'm like, oh, that's amazing. And then afterwards, I was like, oh, you know, doubting myself. Was that, was that good? Because I'm in that at the moment, it was excellent. <laughs> but, and then I, I look back and I doubt. But then we give it a little bit more time. And then you'll see the results. Um, somebody might come up and say, hey, that changed my life. Or that helped me so much. There was an answer to my prayers. Um, and then, you know, you feel like, ah, oh, okay, that was good. God consecrated my efforts, however good or not it was. So have you guys experienced that? Yeah. So, yeah, so that's, um, you know, Manuka helps you with that. It reminds you, don't go into that doubt. Just keep moving forward, right? Um, so he will uphold what you say and do in his name. If you have just the pure intentions, Okay, so how can he fault you when your heart is just pure? Okay, maybe as humans, we may have weaknesses and mistakes, but that's okay, right? So um, once we surrender our heavy burdens and worries over to divine powers, we'll be able to have the capacity to receive greater joy and blessings. So imagine that your arms are full and hands are full of worries okay and when you release it put it on the altar not that you're being irresponsible but you're sharing the load okay then your arms and hands are more empty to receive the greater joy and receive answers and receive other things that god is uh, ready to bless you with so yeah just kind of empty your hands out and put everything on the altar so that's the idea the blessings can also be found in the ashes and pains of life too. Okay, so remember that. Um, these trees are pretty hardy. Now, whenever there's bushfires and things, these trees, um, they make a very good comeback, right? So kind of like us, we can make a good comeback when, when things are hard as well. And those things are necessary for our growth. So Manuka encourages us to be refined by life's challenges. So they're these opportunities instead of obstacles for us right so when you're faced with the challenges tell yourself i'm in the refining fire well, on the other side it's going to be something great as part of the sustaining service right manuka offers a healthy divine shield to protect and keep one safe from the darkness of the world and the parasitic people so can you see on the physical level now can help repel the fungus, parasites, etc. Okay, it reminds you that you're safe and protected by God. Any thoughts? Any comments? Really powerful, huh? Yeah. Okay, so some negative energies that it helps you release is feeling hurt. Yeah. Feeling hurt is just a surface reaction or a result of like poor boundaries, um, unclear um, identities. Feeling forgotten, forsaken. So this is us hearing the adversary lie to us, right? And buying into that. Feeling anguish, miserable, misaligned, feeling unsafe. 
Um, so I, I heard a saying that I really like, and I tell my kids all the time, that we have a choice <clears throat> to see the world as friendly or you know, as hostile. You know, what lenses do we want to put on? Okay. So if we feel unsafe, maybe you see the world as hostile. And you know, we can easily take offense and see that people are against us. But if we take off those lenses and put on the friendly lens, see that the world is friendly and people are good, you actually find evidence of that. So here's emotion of helpless, helplessness, feeling burdened. Remember how you're caring so much that you haven't released, okay? And feeling used and abused by the world and people because you've used and abused yourself, right? And feeling like a victim, okay? A victim to people's um, abuses and whatnot. Um, I read somewhere that you know, like only one percent, you know, of the world of, of the things that in the world is you know happen to you. Most of it is you know about your perception. Ninety nine percent of it is just your perception and how you react or respond to the world. Okay. So, any comments? Any questions? Right, some negative thoughts and beliefs that created those negative emotions. Perhaps you feel or believe that you're unsafe and worried about my safety and security. Um, one lady, she said, ever since she was little, she slept with her back against the wall and facing the doors everywhere she goes. So she has to position her bed in that way all the time for some reason. <laughs> you know, it's just like the world is unsafe. And she tells herself and she tells her family and yeah, um, yeah, it's interesting. I am just another number. Yeah, just another nobody, right? I have to look out for myself. So nobody's watching out for me. So I have to take care of me. Um, no one wants me. And I, I've been abandoned. So like the interpretation. So, you know, one time I just kind of, I went on vacation and this girl, she was doing a competition and she interpreted me on my vacation to visit my family as abandonment. And I was like, um, actually had nothing to do with you. I was just visiting my family. Um, but yeah, just sometimes when people have the perception of the world that they're not safe, that everybody's against them, you can turn anything, you know, into something that can hurt you. Yeah. I just had a thought. Um, I, well, in part of one of my roles in life, I work with young single adults that are like 18 to 31. And recently this topic of not being able to find their like companion, like to get married and stuff has been coming up. And a lot of like trust issues, like they can't trust people and they worry that they're not going to be able to find someone. Um, and I just, this, that's what I thought of when you started reading through all of this. And I thought, oh, this is, and then I had to look at tea tree. This is like the next level. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is like right. the next level of depth beyond tea tree. Yes. So um, it's really powerful. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so that's that's why I'm like so excited. I'm like, this is you're pulling out the big guns. Yeah. yeah, and it's worth it if you have some big issues. So it's good to have, uh, you know, different oils um, mm -hmm. to pick from. But yeah, like you said, there's when when you don't feel tr um, a lot of trust, then you you feel unsafe in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's so good to help these youth, these young single adults, to nip it in the bud, so that they can have a great relationship with their future spouse and have good relationship with their kids um yeah. in laws and things just yeah oh. so look at the flowers they're so beautiful yeah so here are the positive energy to adopt choosing to be a victor i'm a victor over this even if you're in the middle of your trial right now and you know you're on medications and then people are mean to you and all that just choose to be the victor right now and you'll find they start finding solutions, you find that you start seeing the world differently. Just make the choice now. Feeling relieved, 
Okay, even in the stress and the tension, there's some things there that you can feel relieved about. Okay, uh, and see the hands. You need to look for the hands of God and all the, the help that you're receiving. Feeling comforted. Open your heart to that comfort. Feeling healed. Okay, have you chosen to heal? It's funny because sometimes when people come and say, hey, help me here, help me there. I've got, um, you know, these problems. And then after a little conversation, I have to pause and say, hey, um, do you believe you can heal? <laughs> because if they don't believe they can heal, nothing I say or do will help them heal because they haven't chosen to heal. So it's important, okay, to establish that feeling whole. Sometimes people, um, you know, they, they use the healed and whole interchangeably. It can, but what I understand it as is as we become whole or one with our, our divine source, right, we will be healed along the way, okay, on that journey. So it's wholeness is so much more than healed because healed to me is like um, a, an absence of pain but it's so much more than just an absence of pain. You're thriving now, okay? So don't stop where, where you are. Just keep moving. Feeling loved. That, that's the ultimate higher high vibration, right? And feeling upheld, grateful, safe, protected, healthy boundaries. And in this uh, group here, we often talk about boundaries. Um, so boundaries is not about saying no all the time. It's about saying yes to yourself, okay? And then clarifying that and practicing that. Um, being a conqueror, okay? So victor and conqueror is very similar. But I feel like conqueror means you push through and you've overcome something. You know, that's great. Now feeling supported, okay? And uh, the feeling that you're known by God. Right, that's important that you're not just another nobody. Yeah. When you're known by God, you can easily feel important. You can easily feel like you have a place and um, a role to play on this, you know, big earth. Okay. So positive, enlightened thoughts and beliefs. So stuff that you can adopt, right, to feel those positive feelings. God is keenly aware of me, my needs and my heart's desires. Okay, so there's nothing there that's about um, being worthy. Okay, so I find evidence of God's protection and love all around. So this is the unconditional love. All we have to do is be receptive. Okay, it's not about being worthy. Okay. And we can draw on the strength of God and his angels anytime. Okay, this is more powerful, just like allowing yourself, when you're feeling weak, allow yourself to draw from the reservoir of power. Thoughts and beliefs um, that you can adopt every day, okay? Now, anybody want to make a comment? When I when I looked at the picture, the slide before with all the flowers, yeah, I just was like, oh, they're so cute, and there's so many of them. And then the thought came like, there's plenty for everyone. Like yeah. there's plenty, enough and more for everyone. Yeah, it's beautiful. of whatever X Y Z, right? Yeah, so. all the abundance, all the things that you yeah. want. Yeah, beautiful. Yep. Okay, so positive affirmations. Okay, I have healthy boundaries built on self-respect and integrity. Mm -hmm. Okay, sometimes we say I have healthy boundaries, um, but we don't really know what it kind of looks like. Um, sometimes people think it's healthy boundaries, but they're being um, just uh, defensive and we don't have to be defensive. Okay, it is safe for me to move through pains to find my higher self. Oh, what do you guys think about that one? That's a really important one to 
have an understanding of that, Mm -hmm. um, that you actually will move through those pains. um, That it, I think one of the most beautiful things that I learned during energy balancing is to be able to be in the moment and feel whatever that pain is, Mm -hmm. um, to be present in it, to understand where it came from, how it's affecting you, and then release it. So Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important to know that it's okay to walk through that pain and and be in it in that moment Mm -hmm. and then let it go. Yeah, that's so important because what happens is people hide, right? Or they they suppress it, they don't feel it, but because of that, they extend the pain. Um, So just face it and it'll be over sooner than not. Um, but then the reward on the other side is a greater capacity for joy. Um, I was teaching some teenagers about the Beatitudes this week, and I was asking them, "Why is it blessed for those blessed uh, those that uh, that mourn?" You know, and they're like, "Why? Oh!" And so we had a little bit of a discussion, and it's this: it's like you know, mourn and feel that pain and that experience, and mourn with each other. Um, so you can have that whole, um, the greater capacity for joy. And then you have the, the experience of the spectrum of emotions. Um, yeah, because then we can have empathy. Yeah, so lots of lots of good lessons there. I am divine. Yeah. When you know you're divine, you, you have a higher, um, you know, quality of life, right? You want to love deeper. You want to live more intentionally. You want to do things more wholeheartedly and just just a higher um, sense of self. Okay, anybody want to add anything to that? Any comments? So look at that. We zoom into the flowers and there's our busy bee. Okay. Um, so Manuka for skin cleansing. Here, here are our big guns. Okay, Lizia, Melissa, black pepper, lemon myrtle. You can throw in tea tree there. Eucalyptus, cedar wood, guaiac wood, and copaiba. These are just my picks, um, but I'm sure there's plenty more. I can add rose to that too. Actually, um, yeah. So if you want to make um, a roller bottle. Use a little bit of carry oil, don't dilute it too much, but dilution helps it stay on the surface and keep working. If we don't dilute it, it goes straight in and you know it goes to wherever it needs to go. But if we want it to be on the surface, on the skin area or on the nails, we want to dilute it because it'll take its time seeping in. Yeah. There's a few more oils that you can add to that, but um, I think it's sufficient to start there. Okay. All right, so you use it regularly. Remember, every four to six hours, your body metabolizes the oils, and um, you know you need to reapply. Okay, be diligent. Yeah. Does anybody want to ask questions? Yeah. I just feel like I need to use it more. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so immune boosting, uh, diffuser blend. Um, these are my faves, and I don't have a recipe. I just like, you know, drip, drip, you know, and then if I feel like stopping, I'll stop. <laughs> so yeah. combine the manuka with the elixir, with the lemon myrtle, with eucalyptus, with melissa if you want to, especially if somebody's going through something, you know, if they're unwell. Um, so uh, way, way back um, during COVID times, um, I think I was the only one that caught it um, in the house. And perhaps other people did too, but very mild. Everyone continued to, to do their thing. Um, so I know that it's because I just diffused a whole bunch of really big, very powerful, strong oils and uh, protected the family. Yeah, so yeah, those are very important oils. Um, you can do lemon eucalyptus too if you like that smell. Okay, yeah, anybody else want to comment? All right, 
So let's take action. So I have a few questions for you. Um, so before that, I just have the scripture here in Luke 12. But even the very hairs of your head <clears throat> are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. So it's like being known, okay? Okay, so here's a question. How would you like to use my nuka oil for you and in your home and your family? Can um can I be a little revealing revealing, I guess? <laughs> sure. Um so there are times where I mean my husband, please don't get me wrong, he is the most amazing man. He really is. But there are times he says really stupid things. Um, I mean, when just today we were out on uh, the kayak and 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 he said something about me treating people badly, and I'm like, I don't, I don't treat people badly. And he goes, and, and he didn't use the word badly, but he said you treat people badly all the time, and I'm like what you know and, and I know who I am and I know who I am to like all the people I know and I meet and how mm -hmm. I care for them genuinely mm -hmm. and I'm like do you feel like I treat you badly and he's like at times and um anyway it gets in your head sometimes especially when it comes from someone who you love so deeply and who's supposed to love you mm -hmm that deeply that maybe you're not enough for your or there's something wrong with you or in the way that you know you talk to them or say things anyway so um I want to use it to help me like I wish I could go back to the picture but the, the one that said um it's going to help you can be connected more with heavenly father to know your purpose and to block out that darkness. Mm -hmm. when, you, when I read, you know, that it blocks out the darkness and whatnot, I'm like, okay, that's how I want to use it. I want to make sure that I'm blocking out any of the darkness that, because that, I think that's really just Shield. Satan's way of trying to attack you right. is by using people that love you mm -hmm. to point out your flaws. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to point out flaws if it's constructive criticism, but if it's just degrading comments mm -hmm. when you know it's not true that's a completely different thing mm -hmm. and that's what I was feeling today and I'm like no I, I know myself better than that and I'm I'm not that way to mm -hmm. people you know and yeah. um so although he doesn't like it when um when Ashlyn is if she's my daughter for those of you who don't know who that is um when she's being a, a certain way, I'll be honest with her and say, this is unacceptable. You know, you're an adult. You, you can't treat me this way. Like you're living in my home and you can't treat my home this way. So that's unacceptable. And you need to make a change. He doesn't like when I'm really blunt or honest with her that, mm -hmm. um, that I don't accept a particular behavior. Mm -hmm. Um, and he said, you should ask Ashlyn about how you treat her. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, it, it is painful sometimes to hear when you're doing something wrong. That's how, that's why I'm asking you, what, it, what have I done to harm you or hurt you or, or talk to you badly? So, um, because it hurts sometimes to hear the truth, mm -hmm. but um, so I don't know, that's kind of how it stood out to me. Like I want to use that to be more connected with heavenly father yeah. and less connected to darkness, even yeah. if it's not my darkness, darkness around me. I want to be able to make those beautiful, healthy boundaries. Yeah, for sure. That's good. And then people push your buttons, right? And then you say, oh, a little bit uncomfortable there. What was it? Is it me? Is it my stuff or is it their stuff? So right. it could be that you're in the light and they're kind of dark and they're trying to impose. But if you come out of that feeling happy still and, you know, unattached, then you've done, you've done well. Yeah. So, but if you come out of feeling like I'm so hurt, and you're like, hmm, maybe I haven't really clarified and established or found um, evidence. That's what I tell my kids. Like, maybe I believe I am, but I haven't found enough evidence to keep me anchored. Yeah. And this is what's so beautiful about like being able to see yourself change, being able to see 
that you've actually made progress mm -hmm. uh, because he actually came up. He never says, I'm sorry for mm -hmm. anything like ever, ever. And he came up and he apologized. He said, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. And he gave me a kiss on the forehead and he walked away. And I thought about it for a minute because I didn't respond. I didn't say anything. And I'm like, he didn't hurt my feelings. Yeah. He didn't like my feelings weren't hurt because I know I'm not that person. So I'm like, oh my gosh, that's progress because that totally would have offended me yeah. and I would have gotten my, my feelings hurt. But I was like, he didn't hurt my feelings. I'm just disappointed or angry that I'm with someone who still thinks it's okay to talk down to me because it's not okay. Yeah. So um, it could be something else now that you can work on, which is talking respectfully. And here's how I like to hear it, you know, yeah. so beautiful. Exactly. So you're going to use it to uh, invite more light and have healthier boundaries. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. Anybody else want to share? How would you like to use it? Hi, Jade. Hi. Hello. I've got a question. Yeah. Um, I, I probably would have missed it. Um, but does it with a smell, does it smell sweet like honey? Um, it does not. Mm. It smells like a bush <laughs> to me. It smells like <laughs> a bush. Yeah, but it's not bad. Like when you go bushwalking, it smells like the bush. Mm. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. 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 So thank you. I'm just trying to find oils that I can use in the home because my husband doesn't like a lot of smells. So. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 He just needs to kind of adjust to the oils because. As, as we adjust, you know, be more positive, we'll like all the, the happy oils. Yeah. So if I were you though, Seiko, I would use whatever oil I need and he will have to adjust. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I try to do that. Happy wife, that. happy life. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, good job. Mm. <laughs> good Thank question you. though. It does not smell floral. Yeah, it's, it's just more of bush. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Oh, and what are your thoughts and feelings about being known um, to God or known by God? So, you know, God knows you. What do you feel about that? Personally, I love it. Like, mm -hmm. I'd love to know that um, for whatever reason, because I, you know, sometimes you feel so small, but for whatever reason that I am important enough to Heavenly Father that he answers my prayers, mm -hmm. that he knows me and listens to my prayers. And because I, I mean, I absolutely, without a doubt, get answers to my prayers, not all the time and maybe not always the answer that I want to hear, but I, I have constant evidence of answered prayers all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, I um, feel very blessed by that. And, um, and it's good to know that each and every single one of us is important to him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love the, who was that lady? Um, Abraham's, um, you know, wife's handmaid, right? She's you know, Debbie. Remember her name? Yeah. Oh, um, it escaped me just now. It's oh. like on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, when you find it, just tell me. But like yeah. for her, she's almost a nobody in the scriptures, right? Um, kicked out and rejected. And and there's a part in the scriptures that says that God heard her, right? Um, and he's he's gonna bless her. So I feel like all of us can feel like her at one point. Um, because there's so many people, so many needs. And sometimes I'm like, my needs are not as serious or urgent. So take care of everyone else. Um, but still, you know, here's somebody that cares for me for exactly what I need right now. So it's, it's Hagar. Hagar, <laughs> Hagar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can I add to that? So yeah. we this past weekend, we were on our way to and from Temple Trip up to Birmingham. And, um, my, my daughter, she, she needs a vehicle. She, she need not a brand new vehicle. She needs something within her price range. So she's looking and, um, 
Debbie McDonough was, was with us. And of course she's like, call on your angels, you know, and pray for it and manifest it, make it happen. And Ashlyn's like, okay, you know, at least, you know, at least no, like more than this amount of miles on it and stuff like that anyway. And, and basically Debbie gave her instruction and a lesson on stop setting limitations. Heavenly father has no limitations. Stop setting limitations for him to meet your limitations that you think, you know, and I just thought it was so beautiful. And it was so great because like, I've said the same thing to her before, but of course, if it comes from someone else, then she actually listens to it. But, um, it, it, it reminded me too, that, you know, like I remember manifesting something kind of in a joking way, but I'm like, I'm totally going to manifest this happening. And it did some, something yeah. that I, I won, um, this, this beautiful paddle board. I manifested it happening and it actually did over hundreds of people that were there. I'm the one who, who got it. And then I felt guilty because I'm like, oh gosh, maybe I shouldn't have prayed for that because like, that wasn't really important. That wasn't an important prayer. Like I should have been praying for something really important, not, you know, something I want, not, you know, maybe something we need versus something I wanted. And, um, and again, Debbie was like, you know, he has no limits. He, he wants you to have everything you need and, and, um, stop setting limitations on yourself and on prayers. to have Yeah. Life. Yeah. So it's uh, like boxing God in, right. Just let him do his thing. <laughs> Don't box him in. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Last question. What does it look like to be protected from parasitic people? I mm -hmm. talk about this because sometimes people have the idea of, you know, being defensive and, you know, being rude back at people. Um, but in my mind, it's being gentle and loving and so civil. So you speak politely, um, you know, even if people are parasitic or whatever. I, in my mind, people who are parasitic are people who lack the love, lack the personal power. And so they're trying to pull it from everyone else by manipulation, uh, by poor behavior or whatever. So, you know, we can find that love within us to, to kind of be kind to them. Yeah. So what do you think it looks like for you? Yeah, even if you haven't thought about it, it's a good thing to think about, okay? Um, I, you know, every time it evolves. Go ahead. I wanted to give somebody else another chance, somebody else a chance to talk. They're, they're thinking, um, they're thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember not having boundaries that would stop that type of person from taking advantage of me. I, I remember very, very well because it happened in my career as well, having um, those people use you and and then dump on you. It's just such an unhealthy, horrible feeling. And you don't even see it coming when you're in a state of unawareness, you know, just, um, and I actually have since being more connected or, um, I'm going to say it's, this is my definition. I think it's because I'm more spiritually connected now. Um, and, and then just also more uh, aware of, of people and, and, and their approach to me. Um, it is, it is protecting. It is, um, uh, it's almost like a safeguard to protect you from uh, those situations happening, which can be so harmful to you, to you emotionally, to you physically, possibly financially. Um, I mean, when it happened in my career, it was detrimental to, to my career and, um, and I never even saw it coming. So mm -hmm. to have that, I, I wish I had had that then, and I would have known to, um, stay clear of people who, um, you know, aim to harm you and, and they do it to better themselves or, and sometimes not even thinking about purposely harming you, 
they're literally just thinking about themselves and bettering for themselves, mm -hmm. but they will do it just whatever, whatever means it takes to, um, raise whatever, you know, statue or, or position or whatever that they, um, yeah. are trying to make. Yeah. I, I see what you mean. Yeah. So, um, sometimes it's because we didn't treat ourselves well. You know, if you've worked yourself to the ground and you're, you made yourself available to everybody 24 seven, you know, people who, um, you know, need help, they're attracted to that. But when you respect yourself, like you said, you're connected to the divine. Um, it's an automatic thing. When people see that you respect you, you, there's something that blocks them from taking advantage of you. So, you know, for all of us, if we look back, we can take responsibility for all the parasitic people we've attracted, you know, because we didn't know to set boundaries. Um, we didn't know ourselves. We didn't have a strong, clear connection to our divine path. And, um, you know, to our divine uh, source, which is Heavenly Father, right? So, yeah, I think it's an evolution, guys, when you um, do this to feel protected. And it could be our spouses, it could be our children that are parasitic, you know, because we haven't clarified who we are, what we want to do with our life. And so we made ourselves available. Um, and sometimes we've created our own monsters, you know. So um, just take full responsibility and just, you know, reflect. And I think that you'll discover a lot of wonderful things um, to, to resolve. Um, yeah. And very soon when you adjust and you shift, other people will adjust with you, kind of like a dance. Yeah. Anybody want to share or add to that? I don't, I don't know if I have anything to share, but I do have um, kind of a question, um, mm -hmm. which wasn't quite covered is um, thinking of small children who grow up with parasitic parents, <laughs> yeah. and how to protect them when you see that that's, that's an issue. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's not an easy answer for, for any of us. Um, but I think one thing to do is just to pray for angels to minister to them and surround them, um, you know, give them lots of oils to protect them, clove and on guard and manuka, tea tree, yeah, all of those. Um, and then also help them find themselves as soon as you can, you know, that they are not responsible for their parents' happiness, um, that they can still love their parents without, you know, doing everything that the parents want them to do as far as manipulation. Yeah, I think kids are uh, very intelligent, but still we, it's painful to watch, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's that's um, yeah. what I'm thinking, but anybody else want to add to that? Because I, I know it's not an easy answer. Um, I, I think it's good to well, whether it's children or adults is to recognize how it feels. And a lot of times you feel drained, um, you feel conflicted. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you recognize those feelings and can either teach a child or be emotionally mature yourself, then you can ask like, what is it? you know is this about me or is this about them and really what what is the highest good for for me in this situation because like no one else is responsible for my happy but me mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. and um and we can be the example of that to other people as well love that Debbie and you know teach the kids to say no right so if you're yeah. feeling yucky and you're not happy, say no. So even if it's mom or even if it's dad, you can say no. All right, let's practice saying no. Um, my friend, she she was telling me about her daughter and her daughter was like five or six or something, very young. And she's like, ah, oh, my daughter's embarrassing. And she says that when she goes to parties, her daughter, you know, would scream when she sees certain people and then would 
not and be super friendly with others like she's just weird like that and I'm like well she's not weird um so I, I said to her perhaps your daughter has an ability to see light and dark and if somebody is dark and perhaps parasitic she feels unsafe and she's allowed to say no and she's like well come to think of it she only does it with one person and I said well, that person is he nice and she's like no everybody hates him you know and I'm like well, why did you force your daughter to hug him you know and she's like ah, eh, because I'm embarrassed and I said that was about you it's not about her right and she's like yeah okay um so you know we can continue to teach our kids to be mindful and to be uh, aware of themselves or we can you know um kind of teach them to numb it and suppress it right so let's not do that right just uh, allow them to have words um with uh, to describe their feelings so if you're unhappy if you're sad or you're stressed and you can tell as an adult you can tell by the literal language of their body um if they're unhappy and stressed and then you can ask them to to explore, express themselves with words that you give them so you know if you're feeling this way, this way, that's called frustration. If you're feeling this and this way, this is called angry. And it's all okay to feel it. And you can say those words and to tell your mom and tell your dad that you feel that way. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that can be a whole class on its own. But, uh, yeah, thank you for bringing that up, uh, Cheryl. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to stop the recording now.